Hey everyone, it's Sue here. Today I wanted to do a little review on a book I read about happiness. You've been hearing me talk about this book for a while now. I've been working on it for several months. This is a book that's authored by my daughter's brother-in-law. My daughter's husband's brother, I guess. I don't really know him that well personally, um, but I do know that he is a doctor of psychology and teaches at a university there and has his own clinical practice and has traveled the world and done lots of things and practiced a lot of what he's preaching in this book, basically. Anyway, I just thought I would do a quick little feature on this book because I feel like it's, he self-published it, so, but I really, really hope that it gets out there in the world. There's a lot of things in it that I think could help a lot of people. So it's called Overlap, The Heart of Happiness, An Evidence-Based Recipe for Joy, Meaning, and Life Satisfaction by Trevor J. Peterson. The main bottom line premise that he's trying to make in this book is that we will find more meaning and joy in our lives and happiness if we overlap with living things. And I think of it, he, he has a diagram of a circle, you know, like a Venn diagram. I'm in the middle is where you, you overlap with other things. Living thing is his main point. And so he goes on to explain in a whole section what those living things are. And he goes on to explain what the recipe is for overlapping. He defines overlapping by actually interacting and participating in things. He uses snorkeling as an example where we might be driving along past a beach and we drive past and we see that there's a beach there, but we don't stop. That's basically called passing. But we stop and we sit on the beach and we, you know, maybe are enjoying the sights and sounds of the beach, but we just, we're just sitting there. That's spectating, right? And then you could take your shoes off and get in the water and wait a little bit, a little bit wet and play around in the sand. That's waiting. Then there's overlapping, which is when you get in the water and you actually go snorkeling and you see what's in the water. So that's a simple example of the the idea behind this book, basically, that instead of passing by things and not experiencing life, we should just jump right in and experience and participate. So he goes into really a lot of detail about on how to do this. And he has an 11 step recipe. This includes the things that you that you need to do to actually participate. And just to list those off real quick. So he has a chapter about every single one of these things, opening up, valuing, empathizing, relishing, letting go, attending, participating, getting close, um, or proximity is what he calls it, intensity, netting, which he explains is kind of like gathering things, and giving. Each one of these gets a chapter in the book to really go into huge in-depth about what he feels like is something that you can do to have more overlap in your life. He has lots and lots of lists and lots and lots of like worksheet kind of things and like practical ways to do all these things. And um, at, some, at one point I was like, man, this is a lot of work to be happy. But I think most of it is stuff, a lot of it is stuff we already know and we already do in our lives. It's just how to like get better at it. You know what I mean? And then there was a point where I thought, what if this stuff is too hard? What if I'm too much of an introvert? What if I, what if I'm too scared to do all these things? And he addresses all those issues too. As soon as I thought it, then the next chapter was about dragons as he, as he calls it. Things that we have to fight down to, to overcome our fears. And there's a lot of stuff that people have to overcome in order to like truly be able to do this good stuff. So and everything, there's tons of research, tons of stories, tons of illustrations. It's like, it's really, like really well thought out. I ended up really liking it. It took me a while to get through it. It's very heavy, but, but easy to read at the same time. Does that make sense? Like there's a lot to think about. So I did, I think it was good taking it kind of in small chunks. And I was happy that he included books as something that's alive because somebody alive created that. He feels like that if there's something that somebody that was alive created, then that, if you interact with that, that counts. So we're talking like literature and music and art and, you know, stuff like that. 
pets count, nature counts, gardens, plants, being outside, other people, of course, um, ourself. It can be defined by a lot of things. So anyway, I just thought I would tell you a little more detail about that book in case it's something that anybody out there would be interested in finding and um, studying for yourself. So thanks for watching and until next time, happy reading. Bye.